Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Aditya Gupta. I did my MBBS from AIMS New Delhi, followed which I did my MD in Pediatrics from AIMS New Delhi, and I'm currently pursuing my DM in Pediatric Oncology from the same institute. Now, in this video, I'll discuss how do you integrate uh, uh, the clinical subjects into the paraclinical subjects, and how do you improve your clinical understanding to the, uh, the paraclinical subjects. Now, this is important, for, especially for the first and second years, uh, especially for the second years since I'm doing paraclinical subjects, who are going to prepare it instead for the NEET PG or the INICD, they will be probably be preparing for next. Now, uh, just a brief review about what next is from what I think from what is actually happening what the Indian system is trying to do is actually trying to copy US in US what used to happen there used to be step one and step two step one used to cover the first and second year subjects step two used to cover the sec uh, the final year subjects uh, the clinical subjects and uh, then they used to have something called as step two CS which used to have a which used to be practical examination the same thing is being copied here as far as the Indian PG is now is concerned your next will be an MCQ based exam they have categorically mentioned that the focus will be on clinical subjects the focus will be on an understanding some exactly similar to what you uh, USMLE step one and step two were known and renowned for for that matter of fact and step two CS is what is going to take place at the end of your internship that clinical practical examination to check for your skills so they are essentially copying what US used to do uh, in the form of licentiate examination the USMLE my medical license examination they used to have two steps we are also going now going to have two steps first will be the next the exit examination and then another practical exam at the end of your internship now what is important is that they have categorically mentioned that the questions will be clinical in nature the, cat uh, the clinical questions they will require a bit amount of understanding so it's better for you from, from the second year or those who are preparing for those who are in the third year they will be giving the next only uh, how do you revise them and what can you do to improve your clinical understanding I'll go step by step go by uh, subject by subject now I uh, uh, brief uh, before I begin, a brief honest truth time. Like I initially was preparing for USMLE actually. That's the reason I actually have a lot of uh, knowledge about all these things. Uh, but later I changed my tracks, went for NEET, uh, for NEET PG, I AIMS actually, cracked AIMS. Uh, so, but I understand that AIMS has a tradition that uh, being an AIMSonian, I know that AIMS has a tradition and uh, that they tend to ask a lot of clinical questions. They, that's being followed even in our MBBS examination during our MBBS profs and uh, mid-semester and semester examination, they had an uh, intensity and things for this clinical question, which is now being incorporated in a need and most likely will be incorporated in next. It's given in their perspectives for that matter of fact. So first I'll begin with pathology, Robbins. Now, most people know that for pathology, you have to study Robbins. There's no doubt about that. Robbins is an excellent book. I love it with all my heart. You have to remember Robbins just like you remembered your NCRT. You remember back in uh, back in your 12th standard, you used to uh, 11th and 12th standard, you used to remember NCRD. Just that's how you have to read in Robbins. It's your everything. Like you know, everything should be remember. Remember Robbins. It's an excellent book. Please don't go for Harsh Mohan. I request everyone who's watching this video, please, please, please don't go for Harsh Mohan. Robbins is as a vis uh, as a book you have to read. Well, Robbins has a book that people have to read, people know. What people don't know is that there is something called as Robbins Review. What Robbins Review does is, and I have that with me, I used to read Robbins Review. This is the book, The Review of Pathology by Robbins and Kotra. Now, these are just some sample questions from Rob uh, Robbins Review. Now, diseases of infancy and childhood, I'll just discuss one of the questions with you. So they say, a three-year-old boy who is list active for the past two months, has abdominal mass, hematuria, and uh, mass is excised, you see plasma stomal components, uh, child is doing well in 10 years later, which of the following is related to the pathogenesis of the child. So basically, this is how you integrate clinicals into the paraclinical. So they asked a question about Wilms tumor. This is abdominal mass, three-year-old, hematuria, later, He's doing perfectly well. Wim's tumor has an excellent prognosis. Now, what they're asking is, what is the pathogenesis? Pathogenesis is path. Second year, that's how you integrate. So this book, this book that I'm talking about, Review of Pathology, Review of Pathology, this is literally the literally from given from Robbins. So you can read Robbins and do this book, this Review of Pathology, and check your clinical understanding and check your clinical aspect. You'll be able to do, integrate clinics into the paraclinical. Here the answer is simple, since it's based from Wim's tumor, it's uh, based on nephrogenic rest. Uh, the answer here is nephrogenic rest. The other components can be ruled out. Ganglion cells is probably you know, neuroblastoma and things like that. Pseudorazids, again, uh, pseudorazids are found in other cells. Humorite pseudorazids, even sarcoma, true resists are found in retinoblastoma, things like that. Sarcomatous component, no, Wilms tumor is not a sarcoma. Similarly, a mother of a six month old boy notices that he has a palpable abdominal mass. This is the image that is given. Then he has increased VMA and HMA. Adrenal gland is excised uh, surgically. Its logical appearance is shown, which of the following is related to poor prognosis. This is an example, again, they are asking neuroblastoma in a clinical scenario. 
So abdominal mass, six months old, less child, HMA and VMA is raised. This is neuroblastoma. This is a typical presentation of neuroblastoma. And they're asking which is the poor prognostic factor. So instead of giving you a one-liner, which is the following is a poor prognostic factor for neuroblastoma, they give you a clinical scenario. And that's how Next is supposed to be. That's how Next is supposed to be. That's how USMLE has always been. So this book is actually for USMLE, but it's going to be very helpful for your INICT preparation, for your Next preparation, for your NEET-PG preparation in current scenario. So you should always remember this. Another question from hematopath that I can give you in this uh, is given in this book is a 22 year old female reports easy for takeability. Uh, she has pancytopenia, uh, but W counts, WBC counts is not pancytopenia, platelets and hemoglobin is low, but WBC is through the roof. Uh, her blast cells are shown here. They are MPO positive and they contain granules, which is the most likely diagnosis. This, this is a typical presentation of AML. They have given you blast cells. They also have this typical odd rods that you can see here. These are the odd rods that you can see here. They have voluminous pseudoplasm, they are myeloid blast. So this is AML. So that's how you integrate your pathology, your hematology into your clinical core clinical uh, way. That's how they typically tend to present. So this, this book, this is an excellent book along with Robbins. These two will form the basis for doing your second year. Pathology will be incorporated easily into medicine and for your medicine. So that's how. Now I'll come to the second and the most dreaded subject that is pharmacology. After doing with pathology, it's pharmacology. Now I don't understand uh, as a, a person, I don't understand why people used to hate pharmacology. I used to absolutely love pharmacology. Now pharmacology is nothing but according to me physiology that ha that is either amplified or neutralized. So you have antagonist and agonist and they are just amplifying your normal physiology or they're al not allowing your normal form, uh, physiology to happen. Now, or everyone knows about Gobindrai Gar. Gobindrai Gar book and Sparsh Gupta book is an excellent book. I've already said it in my previous video. Uh, even I did it, even I followed it. But for your clinical understanding, for uh, mindset, uh, there's something I'll tell you, uh, there's something called as Lionel, uh, not something called, there's a professor called as Dr. Lionel Raymond. His lectures are available on Torrent, you can download them. They're amazing lectures. Please go through them. Uh, these are like my tiny little secrets. They are known to a lot of people in Ames because uh, Ames has a trend of people preparing for USMLE, a lot of people preparing for USMLE, irrespective of whether they go for uh, their... Uh, irrespective of the fact whether they do end up going to US or not. So that's why we all know this. Uh, a lot of people do re, uh, tend to uh, uh, do these lecture, Lionel Renal lectures. They are amazing. I mean, hats off, amazing guy. Amazing lecture will make pharma absolutely easy for you. Gobind Rai Gurg is also an excellent teacher, but for the clinical understanding part and the way he teaches is also amazing. Please do, uh, do have a look. At the same point of time, Keep GRG and Spursh because your next is definitely through the Indian exam. So Indian exam, you need to have an Indian book as well. Another thing that people don't know, uh, similar to Robin's Pathology, is this book, KDT Review. You literally have a book, since you will be reading for examinations KDT, you have a book with the MCQs and KDT. You can literally revise your entire subjects with these MCQs. As I've already said before, MCQs are the backbone of your, you know, practice. Practice you won't be able to get anywhere. You have to practice MCQs and KDT is the book, you, they literally give you an MCQs. Apart from this, another book from USMLE that I know that can help you with your clinical understanding of the subject pharmacology is pretest. Some examples from pretest. Uh, pretest is available for every subject for pathology, pharmacology, microbiology. I particularly found pretest of pharmacology to be really good. Uh, here, I have it with me. Used to practice it. Take care. So my book, fair enough. Yeah. So. Some questions that I just found. A 45 year old male is on combination therapy for remission of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Then he develops suprapubic pain and hematuria. Uh, there is evidence of hemorrhage and inflammation which the following drug is most likely to cause. So this is, they are basically trying to explain in a clinical scenario that cyclophosphamide causes hemorrhagic cystitis. That's what they're trying to tell you. Answer here will be cyclophosphamide. So that's how you integrate your clinicals into woe. Now it's very easy to remember or it's tough to, you know, remember uh, a random fact like, you know, ki cyclophosphamide may cause hemorrhagic cystitis. Uh, you know, random fact will go out of your memory. But if you think of it in a clinical way, if you think out of it, okay, how will it present to me? A uh, patient, uh, ALL patients will be given cyclophosphamide. He won't present to me saying, Are you hemorrhagic cystitis? Ho gaya. He'll actually come to you saying, Okay, that he's having bleeding in urine, he's having hematuria, and he will be having pain, he will be having a very bad pain. And if you do an examination, you will find all these things. If you do a cystosophy, there will be hemorrhage filled in that. 
So that's how they will present to you actually. And that's actually how children tend to present when they do end up having hemolytic status. Whenever we give a child cyclophosphamide or iphosphamide, we do a routine urine uh, RM examination to look for microscopic hematuria. That may be a harbinger of the actual hemolytic status that tends to happen. So that's how they present. Uh, you won't know about this because you're in your MBBS right now. You're not actually practicing. But uh, that's how you'll get to learn through these questions, through these clinical scenarios that you have to create either yourselves or with the help of these questions. So the next uh, the next thing that I will I'll, uh, discuss is microbiology. You know, a lot of people don't know microbiology. Microbiology is boring. Even I used to find microbiology boring. But a uh, secret, honest truth is time is that uh, I, uh, for in AIMS, uh, microbiology professors are excellent. They teach you excellent mind-blowingly so i never actually had a problem with microbiology but as far as reading is concerned i do know how to uh for since i was preparing for usmb again how to know it in a clinical context i do know about this now this is another book that i will uh, reveal to you this is clinical microbiology made ridiculously simple now uh some people love it some people hate it now you can try it i mean i'll just say that you can just go through it uh you might like it you might not like it i'm uh, i'm not uh, vouching vouching for it the way I'm vouching for Lyman Raymond lectures. Those lectures, definitely everyone should, you know, re, uh, do them once. Absolutely. The same way I'm vouching for Robin's review. Again, an excellent book. This is like a plus minus thing. You can love it or you can absolutely hate it. I used to like it. Similarly, you can do uh, Kaplan, Kaplan lectures. Now, microbiology is essentially made up of four subjects like bacteriology, virology, mycology, and parasitology. For bacteriology, Anand Narayan is an excellent book. Don't go beyond that. It's okay. Virology and immunology. Now I'll tell you something, another thing. Uh, you can use a PDF of this book called Review of My Medical Microbiology and Immunology by Levinson. This is what is followed by every Amazonian. Now, virology is given excellently here. I'll give you an example for that matter of fact. I actually read about coronavirus back then because it was given here. It is given, I'm pretty sure, in Anand Narayan also. But it's given excellently here. And immunology is given excellently in this book. Along with Robbins, if you have to read immunity from any place, please pick this book up. Excellent book for your immunity. Mycology, again, Anant Narayan. And for uh, parasitology, you can use any book. Panicker, Kiri Jasadi. Again, clinical question. So the three things that I want to emphasize right now is that you should know from, you know, from my, I, from, I was preparing for USMLE, did not give it. That's a different thing. But I got to know because of that. Is that uh, there's a book called Pretest for every subject. You can choose it. They will give you clinical scenario questions. I've uh, said in my previous one, case files. Some case files are good, some case files are bad. Biochemistry is excellent, hai, pharma is decent, hai, path is not good, micro I haven't tried. I don't remember using micro. But case files is another book you can use. Pretest is a book, definitely. Tough questions. Remember, there are questions that are tough. I just chose easy questions for to give you an example, but some questions are really tough. These two books are available for all the first and second year subjects. So these can increase your clinical understanding. All these books are available on Libgen. You can just download them. You don't need to spend money on that, by the way. At the same point of time, as far as some specific books and lectures are concerned, please do Lyman Raymond lectures. Raymond sir lectures. If I'm summing up this video, uh, Dr. Raymond lectures, you have to do them. Just download them from somewhere and, you know, amazing lectures. At the same point of time, review of pathology. The review of pathology, the Robinski actual review, Robinski review, hai, yaar. they're literally giving you MCQs out of that book. Do read it up. So this is my video on how to improve your clinical understanding and how to improve uh, your uh, integration, especially for next is concerned. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it.